Hello, this is Ms. Sassick for Ms. Oberlander and Mrs. Sassick's sixth grade history class. Today you're going to learn about the motivations or the three G's and the obstacles that early explorers faced. So let's find out what we're learning today. There are two essential questions that you will be answering today in this video. First, why did European countries compete for power North American, America? And what were the motivations and obstacles faced by explorers? So our first motivation is economics. European nations hoped that finding gold and other natural resources in the New World would help them get rich. So as you see here, when the uh, explorers began to interact with Native Americans, they saw things that they'd seen before, like gold, but this was a great because a lot of uh, European countries didn't have access to their own uh, gold source, and gold is very valuable. And also other natural resources that they had might have depleted or just didn't have available to them in Europe, so it helped them get rich. So now that they're in the New World, they have a lot more um, access to things like lumber, spices and peppers, and other foods. Uh, and other items. Tobacco was a huge one. Tobacco became extremely popular in Europe because they experienced anything really like it before. Um, it became a huge reason why Jamestown was so successful later on was the ability to grow tobacco. Food like tomatoes and corn and pumpkins and squash, a whole list of other things that were discovered in the New World that weren't ever available before in Europe. Uh, allowed European nations to become wealthy with natural resources. Now this also benefited from this because Europeans brought food and animals and other foods and other sorts of um, fun things like metal tools that they never got to experience before um, which benefited both parties. We will talk more about those in another lesson about the Columbian Exchange. Our second motivation, you can uh, guess by the picture in the background, is religion. European nations wanted to share Christianity with the Native Americans. If you remember from our culture lesson, Native Americans, uh, their religious beliefs were very spiritual. They uh, they had a creator God, and we, uh, like the Christians, like we believe Christians believe in one God, and the Native Americans often believed there was one creator God. The thing that was different was uh, the Native Americans also believed that there were other lesser gods that helped the one big creator God. So there are earth gods, there are air gods, water god, gar, gods, um, animal gods, all sorts of things. Um, and so that was much different to what uh, the missionaries, as you see in that a black and white picture on the right had, had dealt with before. So here they are talking to the Native Americans, converting them, um, and teaching them about uh, especially the Spanish uh, Catholicism. Our next motivation is competition. This was a how uh, they wanted to be the best. This is a new way for Europeans to compete to see which country is more powerful. So not only on who had the most powerful army and military, navy, whatnot, but uh, land also showed power. So you see here on a map, we're not going to talk about all these countries in class. We're mostly going to focus on England, France, Spain, and Portugal. And these countries were the major um, uh explorer powers and as you see they begin to explore all over the world not just the new world which would be the Caribbean and North and South America but in parts of Africa, Asia and even Australia and the more land that you had access to that's more access you have to natural resources so that proven to be uh, very valuable when it comes to trade uh, you were very uh, you became dependent on yourself because you had all this access to whatever the land had given you that your country owned. So best way to remember this are the three the three motivations. It's called the three G's. So for economics, it's gold, 
For religion, it's God, and for competition, it's glory. Put them together, you got gold, God, and glory. The three G's. Next, we're going to talk about obstacles. Um, so here's just a silly cartoon I found. A uh, bunch of guys at boot camp about to go on an obstacle course, and this guy is complaining about the obstacle in the way. So there are challenges that you have to open to reach your uh, goal. And the explorers faced many obstacles, some that we can't even imagine how they overcame. And we're going to learn about how they were able to overcome them and how they dealt with them. Our first obstacle, where are we? Well, they're going to the New World. Do we know a lot about the New World? No, we didn't even know it existed until a couple early explorers like Columbus uh, had discovered it. And there were poor maps and navigational tools. Explorers know where they were going. It was very easy to get lost. There's no GPS. You're in the middle of the ocean. There's no landmarks. And if you look at these early maps, you see here, uh, this is a map of North Africa, Europe, um, Middle East, and part of Asia. You see, that's all that really they really knew in the beginning. And you see how it's kind of distorted. It looks funny. It doesn't look like what you think about today on the globe. But you see the easiest part to recognize is the northwest corridor, the top left corner. You see the Italy boot. You see Spain. You see the little island of England up top, um, part of Turkey and Greece. And that's the most accurate part for us there because that's where a lot of map makers were. That's where it was the most recognizable, most explored. So people knew a lot about that area. So that's why it was dr uh, drawn in so well. But once you get outside the Mediterranean Sea, outside of Europe, uh, you see it looks, it looks really funny. Um, because they didn't know that much uh, outside of uh, that land. And over time, as they began to explore more and technology got better, uh, the maps in Europe and Africa and Asia start to look a little bit nicer and more accurate like what we see today. But as you can imagine, when they first discovered the world, it looks very silly. You can kind of see Florida and South America. But it, it's, it's difficult because they just didn't know and they didn't have the technology and no, there's no satellites in space and um, it was very difficult to draw maps. But as they began to discover more and explore more, things got much easier to draw and they look more accurate. It's pretty amazing without a computer. Here are some of the primitive um, navigational tools that lots of explorers use. You'll see a compass. Uh, looks like a star chart, um, a, um, a regular uh, magnetic compass, and then you have the invention of something called the, the sextant, which you see an explorer using here. It's kind of like a funny telescope um, where you point at the horizon and you measure the distance from the horizon to the stars or the angle of the sun. Um, there's a more modern day one right here used by the Navy. Um, they still. Are Second obstacle was disease and starvation. On long voyages, diseases killed many. Ships often ran out of food and in the middle of the ocean. Okay, explorers and their crews, their ship crews had poor diets. So this is a piece of hard tack, kind of like a a glorified saltine cracker, although you think, oh man, I like saltines. Uh, these are really bad. They're gross. Um, very hard, obviously, hence the name hard tack. Um, you were lucky to get one if that didn't have bugs crawling in it or worms. These lasted a lot longer than uh, bread. So this was essentially flour and water, and it was has no nutritional value in it, just made to fill your belly so you wouldn't hungry. And then here is salted pork. Uh, if you look up salted pork, you think of, oh, bacon. Well, I think I know some of you like bacon a lot, especially on you know Saturday morning. But it's not that type of salted pork. It's just heavily preserved meat. So it could be pork or beef. And it was really 
just since there's no refrigerate, refrigerators, it was just meant to stand the test of time. And uh, this was probably one of the first things that you would rev uh, once you're in the middle of the sea. And then lots of dried beans, stews made from dried beans. So what do you notice is missing from these diets of the crew? You're right, there's no fruit or vegetables. Uh, that's it. And even water. Think, yes, they're in the middle of the ocean. Miss Sasek, why don't they just get some water? Well, it's salt water. Salt water is not good for you, and um, it's, it can hurt you. And so they had to they had limited amounts of fresh water with them. And even that, if that got bad, could cause disease. And due to the poor diets of the soldier, or soldiers, the explorers and their crew, a lot of them developed something called scurvy, which was a vitamin C deficiency. You'll be learning more about that soon. And it causes bad infections on your teeth. It's just really gross. Um, and there's no no stores, no place for them to go farming. You're, as you see here in the maps, they're in the middle of the ocean. So they had to rely very much on what they brought, and they had to be very careful about um, rationing their food. Our third obstacle is fear of the unknown. Again, they don't know anything about these places. Going to new places, explorers were afraid that they might sail off the edge of the world or, yes, get eaten by sea monsters. This was a true fear. So they didn't understand that the Earth was round. It was a sphere. Okay, when you think about the horizon, if you've looked out at the beach and you look out to the ocean, it, I mean, that's the horizon. We know it, it just keeps going and it's round, but to them, they're like, that's it. That's the world. That's it. If you go to that line, you're going to fall off and you'll die. Um, and that very much, um, it took a lot of courage for some people to take their ships and prove that this was not the case. As well as uh, they believed in mythical creatures like sea monsters. So they feared that if you the end of the world didn't kill you, the edge of the world, a sea monster would kill you. Which very much wasn't the case. Um, but... Fear of the unknown, it was dangerous. You could have been in a storm and that could have, you could have been lost at sea and nobody knows where you are. So it was a very uh, dangerous mission. And, but a lot of explorers did overcome all these fears and all these obstacles. And that's why you know, we have the, you know, the colonization of, uh, from Europe into the New World, into the Americas. All right, so we're just going to do a quick review. What did we learn? The motivations, the three G's. Um, so they came over for economic purposes, gold. They came over for religious purposes, God. And competitive, uh, com competition. These European countries hated each other. So anything to prove that they were better than everyone else and that they were glorious, um, that was another reason for them to come. Obstacles, poor maps and navigational tools, so very little in that technology. Disease and starvation, so if, the, if you would, weren't lost, then the, it was the disease or starvation that would kill you. And if it wasn't that, it was the fear of the unknown that might have prevented people to come. But they, overcome all, they overcame all these things and were able to accomplish much. All right, this is the end of our video. Hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you in class.